It's the finance week and we have three copies of Infinity's Operation Wildfire to give away. We'll be choosing winners from three of our communities. One from the YouTube comments, one from the OnTabletop.com comments, and one from comments made by Cult of Games members. Make sure and get your comments in and we hope you enjoy the week. Hey guys, and welcome to a massive new project from Corvus Belly. This one's so big, I even have some notes to keep me on track. It's uh, This is the big one. This is a big one. If ever you have ever been um, sitting on the sidelines of Infinity, and, what, uh, and we're looking for that kind of uh, casual player experience to really kind of feel the vibe in the world of Infinity, mm -hmm. this game is going to blow your socks off. I have already played it. I'm going to be I'm going to be praising this one up and down because I've had a blast. As you will see in the how to play video um and the demo game that we've uh, that we've produced for this week. Yeah, Warren, that that's less of a how to play more us just sitting around the table and having fun. Let's I, be honest. It was it was superb. It was superb. So Infinity Defiance Carlos. Uh we're joined of course by Carlos from Corvus Belly. Uh this is a sci-fi dungeon crawler game. It's a cooperative game, um, a, a, a Kickstarter exclusive game. Yeah, and um, it's uh, compatible with Infinity. Absolutely, it feels like Infinity as well, guys. But it, it's just it's it's so good. Carlos, let's just get stuck in. So yeah, Infinity Defiance, uh, the next big thing from Corvus Belli, the biggest thing ever for us, really. I mean, lots of stuff to talk about, really. First of all. Uh, there's a huge wave of contents coming from Corpus Belli, okay? In this video, you will see some of the whole campaign that is coming over you, okay? Uh, but there's a huge wave of contents coming. And there is a limited opportunity window here to get it. So the first thing I had to say before even jumping into the contents is if you like what you see, if you are like into this, get it, okay? Because this is a limited opportunity. This is Kickstarter exclusive Superbox from Corvus Belli, absolutely compatible with Infinity, in a game that is easy to play and enjoy immediately, right after you realize how it goes, it goes like this. So super friendly, casual player game, dungeon crawler, everybody, your friends and family will enjoy it immediately because it's what we have been seeing. Because we have been making demo games for this game, for this project, with prototypes all year, and, and their response is super positive. So, yeah. Infinity Defiance is a Kickstarter project from Corpus Belli. It's the first time we make a Kickstarter game like this, okay? We have people around us with very good advice and experience on doing these kind of campaigns, but Corpus Belli have never ever jumped into this platform to make something like this. Uh, and, and we are putting together the biggest deal, the biggest box ever that this company has put together ever, absolutely. And because we are doing it through this platform, we are able to actually deliver it at an incredible price because we are going directly to you. And that's important. Before even jumping into the contents, let's let's talk about it. Mm. Okay, second super big thing that you have to know about it is a metal miniatures game. Okay, this game is played with Infinity Dun uh, War Game, Skirmish Game miniatures. Totally the same quality that made a very very small company in Spain become a name in the war making in the war gaming market. Because um, some of you may already don't know about this, but this uh, began as a very, very garage company in Spain, okay? And at some point, the product, because of the quality, especially the quality of the skulls, got so popular that it allows us uh, to, to grow and become something. So this dungeon crawler, I can tell you, is special, okay? It's not like any other, because it's made by... This company that learned that has been making metal miniatures for 15 years now, and the quality is above the rest. I, I can say it, and because I'm a company guy, don't, don't you cannot believe in me, but ask people around you, people who knows Infinity, the, the war game, hey, how is this game? How are the quality of the skulls? And I can guarantee totally to you that people will say that they are the best metal sci-fi miniatures in the market. Mm. I can say that, okay? No, and I'm not blushing. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people can't say the same, Carlos, because even your your release schedule, the the release schedule you guys hold with the the metal miniatures, 
and just continued progression of different weapon loadouts and stuff and the different posing you do, everything is always absolutely gorgeous. There are some benefits now that people need to understand uh, because of the fact that it is uh, metal miniatures, okay? Mm. Firstly, um, it's fairly well accepted within uh, within the, the tabletop gaming industry that the, the, the finest quality miniatures are cast in metal anyway, okay? You get you get the best detail, um, they're, they're robust. I love the fact that they have a heft to them. Uh, that um, tactile sense when you're moving them on the board? that whenever you're moving a miniature around that is made of metal, it feels it, it, mm -hmm. it feels like it has a punch to it. Mm. But aside from that, there are there are some other uh, potential benefits here. Um, one, you guys make the metals in house. Yeah, that's one of the mm, strong points here. I would like to yes also address this. Uh, Corvus Belli is a company that has been doing games for lots of years now. We have lots of exposure. We are constantly communicating with the fan base of both Infinity and Aristeia, which are our games. Okay, so this is being made in-house. Okay, what this should mean to, to the customer is that Corvus Belli is going to deliver this product pretty quickly, in my opinion. Okay, I'm not jumping the shark here, but I think that we will be able to deliver it faster than the usual Kickstarter campaign. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I know games that take almost like a year to arrive, stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's not going to happen with this one mm -hmm. because the, the task of making the miniatures is still Corvus Belli in-house and that mm -hmm. allows us to control the quality and make sure that every single miniature is lovely and also the timing, the, we, are, we will not be waiting in a, in a queue for our, our stuff to arrive from from Eastern countries. Yeah, well, you, you have control over the, the production times because it is in-house, so mm. there is there is no cues. You say, we need this many miniatures, let's put the shifts in to do it. Yeah. And apart from that, we cannot hide from media, okay? We are constantly uploading and communicating stuff about our games, so expect to have constant updates about this project, how is it going? I, I will appear on YouTube constantly showing miniatures, how are they are being cast, and in what point of the project are we? So constant communication and constant updates about the project. So yeah, it's going to be very, very Corpus Belli. The company will be fully there, communicating constantly and delivering quality, because if something is going to be special about this, this game is the quality of the skulls, the, the quantity of the skulls, and making every single uh, sculpture different from each other. We are not going to make a game with, okay, 100 the skulls, but 15 guys are the same guy. That that's, is not happening here. Yeah, I was going to ask that because that's an important differentiation here. And this is, this to me is what appeals about the boutique nature of this game. So um, can I just confirm that the, the plan is that every single sculpt will be unique? There's just one... Uh, there, there are just three guys that you will have two copies of it. Mm -hmm. Another three beasts that you will have two copies of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like six guys, but there are two, uh, three different models of it. So that's the only, that's the only thing that keeps me from saying every single sculpt will be different. Mm -hmm. But it's like ninety nine percent of the sculpts will be different. Yeah, every single foe counts. Every single foe will be different from each other. Mm -hmm. So that's one when you have many enemies on the board, you can distinguish all of them. It's not like having the same minion over and over. That at some point you lose track of who is who, you know? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm going to ask why Defiance? Um, knowing full well that um, I, I, I appreciate this game <laughs> so, so much. You know, it's um, as someone who uh, loves the Infinity Universe, but I'm not a very competitive player. I, I'm, 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 I, I enjoy playing Justin from time to time, but it, but a competitive play, I don't get a lot of time for it. As as I have grown, as family and stuff have, have come into my life, your competitive the commitment plays, to a game yeah. um, and, and reaching deep abyssal depths of of rules and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So so I have longed now for maybe. <sighs> maybe six, seven years for a, um, a casual, um, a casual way to, uh, uh, to embrace the infinity universe and to, to, to explore the infinity universe. Um, 
But what what was it that like was it that that drove you guys that to go thing, down this route? Or? That same lines that you're telling me, I keep hearing that from events from all these years. People telling me, I like the look of the Infinity, this uh, skirmish war game that Corvus Belli has been successful at. I like the look of it. I enjoy Operation Einstein, maybe some stuff, stuff like that, but getting into the tournament scene, getting fully into the depth of the rules is like something that makes me rebound in a certain way. So yeah. for us, many, many, many different stars align here in this project. Like we enjoy a lot Aristeia, for example, mm -hmm. and we see that people are demo games of Aristeia, which is another game that Corpus Lee has. People understand that game in turn one and that's it. Yeah. I remember with Justin when we mm -hmm. came here years ago with that game that he totally got it. So mixing Infinity and Aristeia, okay, that seemed like a very cool idea and it came out very naturally, okay? Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, making a casual cooperative game not competitive yeah. because we already have two competitive games with tournament scene but maybe in a casual game cooperative everybody against against a common enemy cool we don't we don't have that in our range okay yeah. uh, jumping into kickstarter another like another thing to really study because we uh, many people around the company was telling us you should go to kickstarter you should through mm -hmm. so Many, many different good ideas got together into this box. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the way I can say it. Yeah. Uh, for us to green light a project, it takes a lot. But this one, it was like in a week. Like this and this and this and this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, it's it's one thing I noticed whenever RS Day came out, the actual game engine you guys built for it really allowed for cinematic moments to happen on the tabletop. Converting that into this game, it's really adding to the narrative flavor of your play, which yeah. I think is a great thing. Definitely. Stay tuned for the Let's Play, guys, because there's a, there's a couple of things I want to feed back to you now on mm. this. The The game is super easy to pick up. Yep. You know, um, uh, the Myself, Justin, Jerry, and Carlos play a game, and it, you will find well, we're getting to grips with the game after like one turn we're really getting there they were finishing my lines totally I was <laughs> in the ending the explanation and they already got it so mm. that's something that's something special but it doesn't lack any depth mm. um, it, you know there's uh, there there's still a lot of uh, a lot of tactical depth to this and there's still loads of different options with your weapon loadouts and stuff mm. The, it feels like infinity. It, it, it even one of the key aspects of the ARO. You know, it, 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 you kind of feel it in there. It's it's different, but it still feels like that that game of infinity where mm. um, even when you're uh, when your opponents are doing something, you have a chance to strike back. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful, fast, interesting technical experience. But it's there's no. There's at no point did I did I feel the dread of oh we're going to hit a whole bunch of rule, rules that I don't know here mm. you know everything that you needed was there in front of you and you're able it's to all just baked into the system it. yeah is the best way to describe it I would find is just mm -hmm. everything that you need to know is either already on your cards or is already just in the game mechanics of each round yeah you know you, you never felt the need to that, that, that you were missing something it just mm -hmm. it just was all there it was like considering Aristeia as an engine to put together a dungeon crawler and the adaptation of making it infinity flavor was so easy because we are so familiar with those rules so it it, it came out very yeah. naturally mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about the background to defiance okay mm. so um I, I have a little bit of uh, almost like fluff text uh, do you mind if I read it because it, it helps it really does help set the set the tone of what's going on here so you know many of you infinity players will know this and uh, it's important to to see this because this this game is actually going to take the infinity universe forward a step okay mm. but basically there's a, there's an open wound within the human sphere so the human sphere is this part of the infinity universe where the humanity has basically existed and, and spread out um, over many many years and it's called the Archeron wormhole yeah and um, from inside that there there are basically legions of alien creatures that are preparing for the moment to unleash a definitive strike against humanity and its allies so for the longest time, we have known that almost like the pinpoint of a huge invasion 
has been pushing its way into the human sphere. Correct. The aliens, the combined army, uh, are not able to to jump safely through the wormhole. We just uh, receive in the human sphere a few spaceships from them that are able to cross and then also uh, uh, avoid the Acheron blockade, which is the, the human fleet that is constantly pointing their guns at, at that specific part of the of the galaxy. And only the ships that survive going through that trip are able to arrive at Paradiso, which is the planet where the main front is happening. Mm. And so, but if the, the aliens establish a safe way of jumping through the blockade and jumping through the wormhole, then we will, our problems will grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. Well, the, 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 the defiance story, this is where it, you're going to love this, okay? Um so four elite soldiers will take the fight to the aliens in a crucial mission to save humanity. O12 has put together several crews of heroes with the intention to send a spaceship through the Archeron wormhole. And the whole project has been sabotaged by Shavashti infiltration. And there's one ship left. And that's the defiance. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes, guys, we get to take the fight to the aliens. So this is uh, this is a big big potential jump here. You know, this is excuse the pun of a jump, but hmm. the the, possi the the possibility of having a crew potentially make it the other way through the wormhole. <gasps> oh. <laughs> the narratives that that can unlock is just is just incredible. So well, I really like this. Yeah, it's the adventure feeling. Yeah, and it's like yeah, getting a, a very big world that has been uh, established and developed by Gutierrez Lusquinos, who is the main writer of this, um, articulate the whole fiction into an adventure because this is an adventure narrative game. It's a dungeon crawler. Mm. So yeah, everything goes more into the the shoulders of heroes and, and not armies. Is is different, yeah. Yeah. So we have. Oh, this is, is the the, this is the defiance. Yeah, ship. the concept design of defiance mm -hmm. after, after many many tryouts. Mm -hmm. And then we have our heroes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can see here the four basic heroes that come in the box. But this has just the, the four, this is the starting point of, of, of our heroes, really, mm -hmm. because there will be more and the campaign has just begun. So stay tuned for the Kickstarter page because there will be more. Apart from Kian Gao, Uma Sorensen, Cutting First Strike, uh, mm -hmm. Warren's favorite. Yes. And and Hadmin Jazz, which is uh, Jesus' f favorite, one of the developers of the game. Mm -hmm. now, this is one of the things I love is we're seeing heroes from the different factions of the infinity universe oh yeah being drawn together into this adventure yeah so you can see the very different combat styles brought out in a really heroic form on the tabletop mm -hmm. and then after that we're talking about the towels you yeah. want to talk about carlos we were going to talk about the basic contents of the the options that we have here let's yeah. talk about the tiles for a second yeah this is like the human environment uh, texture uh, treatment of the tiles these were made by Keith Lowe, okay, a guy who's familiar into the skirmish game world. Yep. Okay, we can see that we have like uh, 12 tiles. Uh, they are going to be double-sided. So on the other side of the tiles, there will be a jungle environment. Uh, that particular tile on the top corner over there is flying a little bit because that will be the stalker and that will be like the dropship of the Defiance. Uh -huh. What actually communicates the battleground with the spaceship is, is, is that tile, that particular tile that will have many different uses in many different moments of the adventure. Sometimes the players will decide where it lands on the table or sometimes will be like, like the rally evacuation point of, of certain missions. Yeah, so it's important to note, like obviously Defiance is the name of the, the main the main Main ship, yeah, that, that that we belong to, and then the stalkers are drop ship, yeah, and then that's how we progress from the defiance yeah. down to you our have mission. The, the panel back. of the defiance yeah. right there, and then mm -hmm. after each mission, you go back to the defiance, mm -hmm. and then there's options and things that you can do. But we'll we'll come to that, you know. So the the stalker, what I love about the stalker tile in this is the fact that it is so such an interactive tile, in that it can you, you there there are elements of control over where it may be and and mm -hmm. how you enter and exit 
um, a particular mission. I, I think of that, that that's a cool option. Mm -hmm. We have an image here just with a preview of the jungle tiles uh, sample. This is still on the works because, uh, well, Keith Lowis ha has now to make tons of textures because there will be another set of tiles also in the in both in the core box and the color health edition that will be uh, with um, alien environments. Okay, yeah. obviously we need those and another natural environment that will be more like a rocky desert stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Next up, we have the enemies. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, remember that in any option of getting the Defiance uh, box, uh, you will get, be getting all the elements that are cardboard and paper, okay? That that will come in, in both. Uh, these are the enemy cards, and you should notice that most of them are Sasbastis because, yeah, Defiance, the, the core essential experience goes against the Sasbasti, which is an alien range from the Infinity Universe that are being totally redesigned and resculpted right now, so everybody's pretty crazy about them. And uh, all the enemy cards have two sides, okay, because at some point, depending on the adventure or the level of alert that they have, uh, well, the red side of the, every enemy is, is more dangerous and more aggressive, okay? Mm -hmm. So as uh, as uh, as a mission progresses, the the threat can build, and then suddenly your aliens become super badass. Yeah. So, okay, what have we got next? Uh, we then have what we were talking about earlier with the the weaponry. Yes. So, for me, this is one of the key things that I love about it is you think of a, a heavy shotgun. Yeah. And then the symbols on the dice give you those narrative little things that can trigger. So, if you roll two shields, you get extra damage. If you roll a special, you can impose the stun state on someone. Yeah. So it, it it's engineering those cinematic, heroic moments into your gameplay. Yeah. Something that I find uh, particularly lovely from this project is the way that Corvus Belli, the developers, Alberto Aval and Jesus, have uh, adapted the Infinity flavor into the Aristea engine. By having, but just by looking at this card, people will understand that this weapon uh, obviously occupies both hands. It's a two-handed weapon mm -hmm. that has a range from one to four, rolls two dice, and has already default success. And then with the symbols of the rolls, uh, you can activate, trigger, different uh, extra uh, effects, states, mm -hmm. uh, damage into the role. So for the Infinity fan, just by looking at this idea, every Infinity fan can also be, make, make the translation, make the adaptation from mm -hmm. what is a heavy rocket launcher, for example, in Infinity nowadays, and what can it be in this engine of rules like okay a proper range a few dice and probably a, a switch that may put the fire state on on the target and, yeah. and the fire state with the aristeria engine is a different thing but the flavor is still the same uh, the identity of the weapon will keep remaining being the same so the lovely work that people familiar with infinity will really uh, appreciate from this game is that it has been a very very faithful adaptation of the mm -hmm. infinity uh, context, identity, environments, uh, situations to uh, a dungeon crawler system. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful, in my opinion. That's uh, uh, a part of the project that is being especially lovely for us. Yeah, yeah. and 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 for me, one of the things that was uh, that was extra special about this is these rules are not hidden in a book. Mm -hmm. That this is all there in front of you on your control panel. You know, you you you're just playing the game you're you're just you're just playing it out yeah there, there's no flipping back and forth there's no i don't know where i'm at yeah, no combat everything, charts everything's in everything's in. in front of you and mm -hmm. it, it just it just works so so nicely yeah now so, we're ready to talk about the core now box. we're ready to talk about the core box yeah this is important okay we have here just to allow you to take a look of the size of this thing okay <laughs> this of, of how big the, the if you pass it in between yeah, the two, yeah, you can get a, a look at it. Go. Don't drop it, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> look at the depth of that box. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a sight to behold, that, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> I think it's the biggest single infinity box I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It totally goes off our usual molds or formats, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Humongous, okay? And this is the core box. Okay, this is going to have all the cards and all the tiles and dice and, and stuff that you will need to experience the the Infinity Defiance adventure, okay? 
and the core box is just going to come with 12 miniatures, mm -hmm. just 12 miniatures. I'm not even mentioning a stretch goals that will be unlocked during the campaign that I'm pretty sure that will be, uh, will be unlocked. But mm -hmm. this is the, the shy approach. The, okay, I, I'm interested, but just sl slightly interested. I want to experience the adventure. I'm fine with it, okay? Yeah. If you need any additional model for enjoying, you know, because maybe more enemies come at you, you will have uh, cardboard tokens to represent them, okay? Mm -hmm. But this is enough for enjoying the adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. This is to dip your toe in the... In, <laughs> yeah, in the swimming in the, pool. The, like, yeah. okay, I'm fine, but uh, hey, come on. <laughs> yeah. But but for, yeah, the, yeah. for those of us all, uh, that are uh, absolutely already in love... Stay tuned and you may see more stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. but let's yeah. now analyze the core elements of the core box because these are important. Okay, these okay. are the selection of miniatures that we consider essential to enjoy the adventure. Yeah. So, of course, we have the four heroes right there. Mm -hmm. And we can now go piece by piece here just to show yeah. you how it comes yeah. and how it can look like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we have some of the gorgeously painted miniatures already here. So, who okay. is this, Carlos? This is the, mm, okay, they are all heroes from all factions, but. Uh -huh. People will recognize that this uh, is the blue faction of yeah. Infinity, which is Pan Oceania, and this is the hero that people identify as the Pano hero. Okay, this is Uma Sorensen, the Pano hero, and she is the expert in light weaponry and uh, infiltration, I would say, and and you know, uh, and the Mark's woman of the team, absolutely. In the game pl that we played, she dual wielded these weapons. Oh, totally, and she was. Devastating. Yeah, she's yes. the killing machine. Absolutely I would say that. devastating. So she was. So we can show you also how the actual miniature comes in the box because mm -hmm. these are metal miniature and it's time for you to see actual how it comes and how it looks like. Okay. okay. So two pieces is all you need to build that. And it just goes together. Just at yeah. the waist. Yeah. Torso, the waist. head, and arms are one yeah. piece. Legs are one piece. That's it. Okay. Assemble that. And from that. Yeah. You, you touch. That. You touch it a little bit with the with the brush. And it's like that, yeah, immediately. <laughs> I mean, it happens with all the games, you know. Mm. <laughs> Moving on, okay, let's keep on showing the uh -huh. the characters here. Okay. And that is Qian Gao, the character oh. from Yu Ching. Okay, That's obviously a bigger character. piece. Yeah, look at that. He is an absolute beast in his heavy armor with his heavy shotgun. Yeah, a tip for anybody playing him, he, he is a tank. Mm -hmm. So if you need someone to help soak up some of the 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 kind of the the madness mm -hmm. that um, can befall all of the other players, this is the guy to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a very generous guy who helps the team a lot. A team player, yeah. absolutely. Let Eugene, me just bring best faction, as you know. Let me just bring in his components, and you can see um, what we have there to in order to make him. So beautiful. Head. And if you like, uh, I'm sure you can see it, but look at the detail on these sculpts. So, you know, this is, this is where the metal miniatures come into their own, you know, a, just that sense of weightiness, you know, just that, oh, it just feels right. And then, um, to, to, you can actually, s just the details are so crisp on it. They just really are. It's something as, uh, as well with uh, the modern sculpts from Infinity. They've actually got so much experience now in doing metal models. They really know how to get the, the socket joints and everything to work so yeah. that it's really easy to put them together. Next up is my personal favorite. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is my canine <laughs> Scotsman of wolf dude, and he is just astonishing. He is a total close combat beast if if there's a miniature that was still in the hotspot in all the photos is this one oh. uh, cutting first strike jumping with with that machete he he is just incredible i had such fun playing this guy it was it was brilliant um here's his components just so as you can get a quick look at it um so there's uh the arms the the which bits this this is the the, the leg. leg and the base yeah, yeah. And there is the 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 torso mm -hmm. and the other leg. So, uh, Carlos, uh, base wise, do we know what's happening? Bases wise, these are the bases that they will come with. And yes, those are yeah. the bases that they will come with, and uh, the box will also probably include many of these ring uh, color rings, uh, twenty five of them, uh, to identify, distinguish the yeah. mm -hmm. the different. There will be three colors. It will be mm -hmm. like ten, ten, and five. 
Maybe those yeah. are not the final colors, but it will yeah. be. And then those guys just pop in. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. The last hero of the four basic heroes is uh, Jazz. Jazz. Okay. okay. So there we have Jazz. That is the Nomad uh, character. If you're not familiar with Infinity, you will re recognize the colors. Mm -hmm. Like uh, red is Nomad, green is Ariadna, orange is Yuchin, and Panu is blue. Which uh, we designed them intentionally to wear those colors in a very obvious way, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, further in the campaign, uh, heroes, more heroes will appear and they will be a bit more complex in, in their looks because they will come essentially from, from the deepness of the fluff of infinity, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's your four heroes. Uh, Jazz, again, is a superb character in the game. Mm. Um, uh, she's the master hacker of mm. the of the four player group that we played, and uh, her ability to do all sorts of amazing hacking stuff was, yeah. was brilliant. And even the game's mechanic around hacking just was so slick because you had your your hacking kind of console, and then you had your programs. So you know everything you needed was there. It was, it was very good. I yeah. can reveal to you that one of the developers of the game, uh, Jesus, uh, he loves the nomads. He always put an extra effort in the nomads <laughs> uh, and hacking, and, and especially the way that the jazz can be upgraded through the campaign is different from the rest of the team because, well, many, many different layers of, of complexity goes with the hacking so to have that special flavor, really. Yeah. Okay, next up. The tiger creatures. A couple of monsters, yeah. So yeah, like who are dogs, these guys? Alien dogs of war. Alien in a certain dogs way. of war. So we're now getting into the, the foes. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, these haven't been released regularly for Infinity yet. So Infinity mm -hmm. players may get crazy about having <laughs> six copies of these guys uh, for for the gameplay. Yeah. In the core set just comes two uh, miniatures. There's a third miniature here. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the final collector set, there will be like six of them, uh, two copies of each. Wow. Yeah, this is the, the first of them that you do get duplicates of the sculpts for then. Yeah, because you will need many of these mm -hmm. yeah. in the game. And, and here we, we can see the, the components that are going together to make them. Well, you know, for one it, of them. And again, so the components, you know, basically you can see the little uh, lugs and stuff to make it really easy to know how they, how they go together. So just Once like again, because Corvus like really that. have been making these miniatures for 15 years, the assembly and the 3D sculpting now yeah. allows the, to, to make very, very, very tight um, assembly pieces. Right, yeah, just, it's also the way you break the really miniature nice. down yeah. for molding. You know, that's, that's a level of experience that makes your miniatures really easy to build. And they're so clean as well. I'm just looking at the, the casts on these. They are so clean. They are just ready to go together. I don't see an awful lot of cleanup or anything that, that's even needed on these. We yet, so. receive a lot of praise from people who know about this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it comes from a crew of people, that, as I said, they, they have been doing this for, for more than a decade already. So yeah. they, they have become pretty good at it. Okay, what's next? Okay, the Nox troops, mm -hmm. which are you have two copies here because in the core box two copies of the uh, of the Nox will come. Okay, yeah. and those are essentially basic Sasvasti foes. Okay, that uh, yeah, there's these two. Mm -hmm. uh, the basic line troops for the Sasvasti are now the Nox. Okay, essential Sasvastis carrying combi rifle and being dangerous. Uh, you also will face many of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing is that uh, almost during this year, Corvus Belli released a, a box, a battle box for Infinity named Operation Wildfire. And there are already Sasvastis there. And, mm -hmm. and if you happen to be an Infinity player and you already have Operation Wildfire, which is totally enjoyable in its own, you will have another bunch of Nox troops. So yeah. you won't have to repeat any miniature of the of the whole Defiance adventure already. Mm -hmm. So just making sure this is the this is one of them. Yep, yep. Yep. So there you can see the the components backpack arm. Oh no, weapon. that's that's a Cadmus. Oh, it's the wrong one. Yeah, yeah hang on it's, one second. It's, uh, I have oh, it here. Sorry, I've I've jumped that ahead of myself. Of so here we go. Yeah. So here we have him with his arms. Yeah. So this is the one carrying a pistol and a knife. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah, that's one. That that goes together. Like, like that. This character. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. What's next? Uh, the cat moves that you have already there, which mm -hmm. is very similar to the Nox, but these are more resilient in the game. Okay, these yeah. are considered paratroopers, uh, Sarvastic Cadmus, and uh, well, certain qualities that they have in this uh, Defiance Adventure is that they, they have they can receive reinforcements. Okay, but they are supposed to drop on the table in certain points, and it's easy for them to come back. Yeah, and as you know, because you played already the game, they are more uh, tougher than they are than tougher. Them. Yeah, if you want to kill them, you have to mean it. And um, here are the the components of him as yeah, as I have shown you. So arms, mm -hmm. backpack, and the main body. There. The core mm -hmm. set comes with one of these. The collector's edition will come with three different sculpts of this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the 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 mechanics behind. Um, threat or alert in this game and the mechanics specifically around reinforcements and respawns are really really good you know it's um uh, as you become more aggressive the the ai in the game pushes back. starts to push back mm. you know so and, and you have to be aggressive because if you're not that AI is just going to roll over you anyway. You, you, you know, uh, it, it just it works so, so well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carlos, who is this guy? This is one of the Jade Cathroats, okay? Another uh, um, enemy that belongs to the Sasvasti army. A tough guy also. I'm, I'm very, as you can see him charging forward with chain rifles right there. These miniatures, this, this particular unit has not yet been released for Infinity as a regular release. Mm -hmm. So people might get very crazy about it, uh, making its first appearance here in Defiance. Yeah. Some of these miniatures are particularly exciting for those who are very much into, into Infinity. You can mm -hmm. see the assembly there, and that's one of the, the assembly solutions that I like the most from, from our recent miniatures. Look at yeah. both arms are just one piece. I, oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's, it's just a case of taking your torso there and you just go. popping them on. Let me just have a go here. So there. Yeah, just slots Super. together. Just, just, it just works. Mm -hmm. It just works. <laughs> it's nice. Very nice. Okay, okay moving what's on. next? Allow me to show you the heavy infantry, still with the Sasbasti, which is mm -hmm. the Huelos, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, let's have a... That's like the body, that's like the, the, the big um, <sighs> bad final that. boss from the corset, okay? Uh, from the selection of, of eight enemies that it has, uh, mm -hmm. that is the the most uh, dangerous one, in a certain way. Has is supposed to have nano screen and and that's the heavy infantry. More it's a beautiful miniature. Difficult to kill, beautiful miniature. but hackable, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the Cadmus and the Whalos are hackable, and that allows. That's where the, jazz comes. Yeah, in. totally. Yeah. So, and there's the components, just so she can get a, a quick look at what it what it'll take to put them together mm -hmm. really nice and finally as the last miniature from the core set we have here the speculo killer mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we we stay still in the sasvasti but the sasvasti yeah. can impersonate humans and the glamour comes from the speculo killer absolutely. okay so let's have a look at this oh ho, ho, ho. this is a classic infinity enemy that the people is well aware of because he can impersonate your troops and and deliver a deadly blow to your to your lieutenant Just in the like war game. Pink job. <laughs> and I'm guessing it's, it's one beautiful. of these that was probably responsible for the other ships being yeah. destroyed. The Sasvasti, and this is a Sasvasti, but it's in disguise, uh, mm -hmm. can uh, impersonate humans, and that was make them so dangerous. And that mm -hmm. is what allowed them to sabotage the other uh, spaceships, the other crews uh, that Otto was putting together in order to try to, to jump through. I just want to point out something to our viewers at home. This beautiful design on the cloak mm -hmm. is sculpted in. Yeah. It's there to be picked out, guys. Just look at that. It's even if you look I down the, the arms of the character, that, that detailing down along the arms is yeah. all sculpted. It's just so nice. So, so nice. What a beautiful miniature. Mm -hmm. So back to group shot again. Those yep. 12 miniatures that you have just seen are the essential 12 from the core set. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you are already excited, as much as we are here with Defiance, yes. let me tell you that, of course, there is a collector's edition. Ah. And that is the one I want you to really focus on, okay? <laughs> because if uh, all the tiles, the cardboard, the cars, and the 12 miniatures was good enough for you, 
please check this out because this is much bigger. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Boom. Uh, this is a display uh, of, of, of how much stuff will, will come. The cardboard, the how to play, uh, all the paper things are common to both editions. Okay. Yeah. But this box, without even mentioning any stretch goals, without even mentioning any, any add ons, any extras that might be unlocked during the campaign, this will have 33 miniatures. Okay. The whole adventure can be played with different miniatures, with different enemies, and with lovely sculptures and. 99% of them unique with the collector's edition. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's move forward, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a good image that sums up how much stuff does it come here. And you can see right there, if you look at the lower level, they will, you will see the heroes and you will see the little remote yeah. uh, Billy that comes with jazz, which in the corset is just a marker. Here will be a miniature. Mm -hmm. And you can see another hero there because... One of the earliest uh, stress goals already unlocked will be the Hack Islam hero, Raman Rouhani, mm -hmm. and it's already there because you can count that that is probably being unlocked right now while, while we're talking, okay? Yeah. yeah, so those those two miniatures are not core, but they are the earliest of the stretch goals, yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. The amount of miniatures that comes is listed right there. Five mm -hmm. heroes, we're already counting with Raman Rouhani. One companion, which is the little remote, and then six Nox troops. Three of them are different. You will have additional copies of each one of them. Six tiger, tiger creatures. Three of them are different, and we will, you are getting two copies of each. And three soldiers, three Carmus, two Jades, two Caliban, two Speculo Killers, one Guelos, one the Carontis, Ida Swanson, Victor Messer, and Siskin wearing heavy infantry armor, which is something that probably even not the Infinity fans knew about, okay? Mm. Uh, really, really special stuff, okay? <laughs> so, and this is the collector's edition. And mm -hmm. we are not even mentioning lots of stress goals that are happening further in the campaign that yeah. you ha have just begun, okay? Mm -hmm. We have some of those miniatures right here. We can show them yeah, quickly, absolutely. okay? Because they have been all painted by Angel Herald. That's another Nox, and this one is holding the HMG in his hands. Mm -hmm. So... That will fit as an ox in defiance, and that will be a lovely ox for infinity because yes, this remember, is what you were this talking is about. Totally compatible. Mm -hmm. Moving on, you have another Cadmus right there holding a sword. These are very useful uh, for the bad guys in, in, in defiance. Okay, moving on quickly, mm -hmm. you have a Sasbastic Caliban right there. Uh, don't be scared of those antennas because Cosworth really has become exceptional of avoiding those issues mm -hmm. because the, the, the body will be just in two pieces and all the antennas will be cast already. Mm -hmm. So the Calibans are looking lovely. Yeah, yeah this oh, is what we were talking about. Another Cadmus. We have the three Cadmus here already painted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So more and more stuff. Mm -hmm. The second Speculo Killer right there, you can see. Oh, it. just look at that one. Yeah, yeah we no never variant. made a, a male one. Despite that they don't, do, don't have any gender because they are mm -hmm. aliens, but uh, second Speculo Killer. Mm -hmm. oh, just incredible. Yeah, the third Taiga with, that we haven't shown, okay, mm -hmm. uh, because there will be three and three finally in the collector's box. Mm -hmm. yeah. Victor Messer character from the Fluff, and this is not an enemy or at some point in the, during the adventure is an NPC, okay? Oh, so even some of the NPCs are getting, uh, getting minis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, spoiler alert, he's opening his mouth, so now you know that it's a Sasbasti. <laughs> oh, right, <okay. laughs> which, is, which is a common, a common uh, something well known in, in, for the Infinity fans, okay, but maybe yeah, not for the guys who, who approach this, okay? So, yeah. Warren, if you think someone's a Sasbasti, just go, smile. Smile. Yeah. And totally. the mouth opens up. It smells, it smells like treason to me. And then the last one. Look <laughs> and the big that. one, the Caron yeah. Tits, okay? which is not a Sasbasti, is that's for the combined army, okay? Mm -hmm. So a lovely final boss that you have mm -hmm. for many of the missions, okay? Lovely. And there are more miniatures that we don't have here, but mm -hmm. will arrive at some point, okay? And again, many, many stress goals. We will make a video about all the surprises and the stress goals that are going to be unlocked during the campaign because we have a ton of stuff. As I said, we're not even mentioning add-ons in this video. We're not even mentioning expansions in this video. We're not yeah. even mentioning many of the elements that are still yet to come. We're just focused. Once again, there is a core set and a collector's edition. Okay. If you feel shy about this, if you just want to experience adventure and that is enough for you, core set. Mm 
if you want to deep dive into it, collector's edition. The difference, the price difference will be like uh, one doubles the other a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The amount of stuff, the difference is huge, okay? Yeah. Corvus Belli has never ever put a box so full of stuff as the collector's edition of Defiance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is even, even going to happen again, yeah. okay? We're jumping full into the adventure of making a Kickstarter. We consider that it is going to be successful and, and we wanted to really deliver something Exceptional. incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, seeing that collector set, I've got to say it is tempting just to look off the diving board and go wee straight well, in. It, it's it, looking at it as it is, mm. you know, it, 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 it's mouth watering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> However, when you start to think of the possibilities of the unlock stretch goals mm -hmm. and some of the add ons and expansions and yeah. things like that, I think this campaign is going to be something quite special. I, I really am. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you, you know, the whole prospect, Carlos, if this goes well, the prospect of being able to explore the Infinity Universe in this format, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a friendly, casual way, uh, th th knowing full well you. the mm -hmm. fact Definitely. that you guys have a huge catalog of characters and enemies and things like that, mm -hmm. that um, in the future could potentially start to make their way it, you know, into this format that we that we can explore. It, it's See, it, it kind of reminds me of something you guys did years ago, the Darfos. Mm -hmm. seeing something like that just once in a while if a couple of new heroes or a new hero came out you could sit down and replay the campaign and have it turn out so differently just by mm. changing out a couple of people from that main team very very interesting the whole concept so finally summing it up okay corset or collector's edition mm -hmm. my advice go for the collector's edition <laughs> <laughs> yep. obviously <laughs> check out the kickstarter page because uh, the way that everything has been structurized uh, there's a lot of surprises yet to come okay uh, stay tuned for looking at the stretch goals constantly being unlocked in the campaign stay tuned for racing elements okay we haven't even talked about them but there will be racing doors and and markers oh. and <laughs> consoles that uh, kind of stuff i think i think that i, I the, felt that helps the game look there. Even better oh. there will be an expansion and then maybe another expansion and then maybe as as, as much as the campaign keeps on going successfully okay mm -hmm. more characters more heroes extra arms for your heroes that come in the core box okay there's a, the chance of unlocking the Infinity Factions to be playable as, as the enemies on multiple Ooh. scenarios. More <laughs> tiles, more cars once again. <laughs> the, uh, there will be something that we call reinforcement packs that will be repacks of the existing Infinity figures, but as foes for play, be playing in Defiance. Nice. So my advice, apart from getting both the core set and the collector set, both, you know, <laughs> one on top of each other, Support the campaign, get as much stuff as you want because you will never find it by the price that it's going to have because we're mm -hmm. on Kickstarter, we're delivering this directly to you. It will happen sooner than you may think and we'll, Corvus will keep you updated about it. And finally, if you like what you're seeing, share the story, mm -hmm. share the link, share the videos because this is a one moment of opportunity, a very limited opportunity window. If you think that you have friends that you will, you will, they will like this, share the story, send them the videos, put it on your social media. You know that with Kickstarter works a lot of like this, and we really wanted to spread the word, okay? Because mm -hmm. this opportunity is limited, especially yeah, the collector's is... edition. I will I will uh, back that up because it's um, having played this game now. This is this is the infinity I have always wanted. Mm -hmm. I'm not criticizing the the infinity that's there, um, but you know, uh, in a time short world that I live in, <laughs> and where I play mostly with my family and my kids these days, the, the, this cooperative, interesting, delving approach to infinity is just wonderful. So is so, it your perfect window into the world? Oh, absolutely. So the uh, you know for me, you know, if you have friends that you've ever wanted to get into a game of infinity, this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely the way to do it. To do a dungeon delve through those spaceships to between every mission you're building your characters, you you know it it feels so narrative. It feels so infinity and it, it's allowing me to experience just the the the, the beauty that mm. is that world that Gutierrez has created uh, in a in a fashion that that just takes 
it, it just takes a completely different and a more casual approach. I, I just have got to say, if you've ever, if you've ever wanted to introduce people to the world, God damn, this is this is as good a way as I can mm. think of to do it. So you know, yeah, I, I back you up on that. This is this is a Kickstarter that's worth sharing. I believe it's a product that it's a product that the, that only Kickstarter could kind of create. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it's so big, there's there's so much in it. I, I can I can understand why it's a Kickstarter exclusive, mm. um, but uh, man, I just the future for it is just so bright. It is it is just really really interesting. Um, Please, please, if you if, when you get a chance, watch that let's play to you see just how straightforward these rules are, and just how much flavor is unlocked by those straightforward rules. It's, it's just it's it just plays so nice. Carlos, thank you, mate. This week we'll be bringing you some other deep dives into other aspects of defiance. Did you mention resin resin add-on bits? I gotta see those as well. I can't wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, guys, you know what to do. Head on over to the campaign, share this video, and uh, yeah, get your questions below. And uh, I'm sure that the Corvus Belly team will be on hand to try and uh, answer and help out in any way they can. Yeah, check the mm. Kickstarter page. It's going to be constantly updated and constantly bringing more stuff, really. It's yeah. going to be a wild ride. Mm. Okay, guys, let's get to it. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.